Today we're going to talk about the wet end components of an end suction centrifugal pump. The components are the casing or volute, the impeller, and the stuffing box cover. And over here we have a back pullout assembly with a John Crane mechanical seal. So to do a precision rebuild of these pumps, the whole uh, expectation is to get this pump rebuilt in a condition that makes it perform like new or as close to new as absolutely possible. So to do that, we have to follow certain inspection criteria. So from the top, we'll look at the casing. So in this casing, there's certain areas that we inspect and we're looking for grooving across the face of the casing. We're looking at the casing gasket area, looking for cracks and irregularities or washouts. And then also up inside here, I'm pointing at the cut water. So that cut water area needs to be smooth and as straight across as possible. So as these pumps become older and older, and as we change out back pullout assemblies, the casings typically stay installed in the piping. So it's very important that we look closely at the condition of the casing when we do a precision rebuild. Okay, next we have the impeller. The impeller has a surface that mates up against the casing. And what we're looking for is grooves in the impeller or generalized wear, bent veins, as well as the condition of the back pump out veins. And also we look at the connecting surfaces, the threads of the impeller, and the surface where it meets up against the shaft sleeve. Now we're going to look closely at the stuffing box cover. The stuffing box cover we inspect for wear, grooves, pitting, or damage to the surface that the impeller matches up against. So any irregularities are caught. We also look at the, ga the gasketing surface that meets up against the casing, as well as the bore where the shaft sleeve goes through the stuffing box cover. So we look at all those different areas, as well as the face of the stuffing box where the mechanical seal mounts. Lastly, we look at where the mating surface would go against the frame adapter, where those mating surfaces are together. Okay, so those are the three components that we're looking at and the areas that we're looking at. So when we're looking at uh, how deep grooves or irregularities are in the casing, those need to be an eighth of an inch or less. When it comes to the impeller, it's even a little tighter. The wear grooves or irregularities to the face of the impeller have to be a sixteenth of an inch or less. Any bent veins basically uh, eliminates this impeller from being reused. And then lastly, the back pump out veins have a criteria where they have to be within a 32nd of an inch and you don't want to see rounded edges from wear from abrasion and so forth. And then when we look at the stuffing box cover, the same criteria, uh, grooves an eighth of an inch or deeper, or generalized wear an eighth of an inch. And you do this by checking with a straight edge across and you can make a judgment call on that. But anytime you reuse components that have uh, grooves, generalized wear, or opened up clearances, each one of these things will have an effect on overall performance, efficiency, and reliability. So the impeller is set at a clearance to this casing. And in the ops manual, it tells you on a 3196 MT of this size with a standard temperature of 200 degrees F or under, you would set this at 8 thousandths clearance. So when you're setting 8 thousandths clearance to the casing, that also allows for a clearance to the stuffing box. When you add these two clearances together, you typically will have 60 to 85 thousandths total clearance from the casing to the stuffing box. 
So as you have wear to these components, uh, per the performance and hydraulic operation of this pump will fall off. So you can reset the impeller clearance to the casing and keep moving it toward the casing closer and closer as you have wear, but in effect that moves it farther and farther away from the stuffing box cover. And that's where these back pump out veins come in. These back pump out veins are designed to help lower the actual thrust loading of this pump. So the more open area between the impeller and the stuffing box cover, the more thrust loading is on this pump shaft and on this bearing assembly. So if you have uh, ex extreme clearances, wide open clearances, you could be experiencing thrust bearing failures. Once again, open clearances, extra wear, all have an effect on reliability. Additionally, as this clearance is opened up with the impeller away from the stuffing box cover, not only does it have an effect on thrust loading, but it also doesn't allow for the back pump out veins to actually push solids and particles outward as this thing is spinning and running. So it's less efficient that way. So it allows for larger particles or solids to get in by the mechanical seal. Lastly, when this clearance is opened up, it also creates a higher stuffing box pressure, which causes your packing to leak more uh, heavily, as well as mechanical seal failure. So we covered this 3196 ANSI pump. Now I'd like to just show a couple other examples. This first example is a Gould's 3175 stuffing box cover. As you can see, there's, there's grooves in here that are marginal. They're probably in that less than an eighth inch uh, depth area. So you could, in theory, reuse this thing, but it will have some area of leakage and a little less efficiency. Here we have an impeller that was pulled off of a pump and this is not the actual impeller to that side plate, but you would look for wear on the face of the impeller as well as these back pump that we talked about earlier. And then, of course, the suction side plate. The suction side plate is on a 3175 pump, and as you can see, the grooves are actually fairly deep, and this particular side plate I would not recommend reusing because it will definitely have a fall off on performance and and ultimately reliability. And then the third one is a casing. This particular casing was set with standard clearances and which was like eight thousandths as we stated earlier. And the actual operating temperature in the process was over 300 degrees. So this impeller was actually set closer to the casing than what the O&M manual recommends. And therefore we had impeller to casing contact. So this has significant wear on it. This next example is a Gould 3196 XLT pump. Now this particular back pullout assembly that you're looking at here has significant abrasive wear throughout. You can see not only is there wear and irregularities on the, on the work area of the impellers, but on the face that goes against the casing. The back pump out veins are nearly gone on the back side. And you can see that there's cupping on the stuffing box cover going across from the center outward. Lastly, I would point out that up near the cut water area in the casing, there's an extreme amount of washout as well. Now this is clearly an abrasive wear example. Okay, so up to this point, we talked about really end suction centrifugal pumps. We, are, we also have split case pumps. And instead of having an impeller to casing wearing clearance, we have an impeller wearing to a casing wearing clearance that we have to pay attention to. Those are very, very critical, especially on a double suction pump or a split case pump. Uh, you're down to a total of 20 to 40 thousandths, depending on the size of the pump and the material of the uh, rings we're talking about. But those particular dimensions are really about performance and reliability as well. 
So to get this, to make your pumps last longer, it's very important that when you do a rebuild and you put the expense of bearings and so forth into a rebuild, it's important that you look at all these different areas, the stuffing box, the impeller, the casings, all those clearances, how much wear, they will all affect reliability of your pump.